I'm going to tell you flat out, do not make any New Year's resolutions unless you do the work that it takes to go from an off the cuff remark like, oh, I'm going to join the gym or I'm going to play more tennis to an actual meaningful and lasting behavior change. Now, I'm not sure if you knew that, but in addition to being a former top 30 WTA pro, I am also a Duke University certified integrative health coach and as such a behavior modification specialist. And I'm giving you five steps that will skyrocketingly, not sure if that's a word, skyrocketingly increase the chances of your New Year's resolution to actually become a meaningful and long lasting behavior change. So I wanna hear from you down in the comments what your New Year's resolution is or what the commitment is that you wanna to stick to in 2022. But now let's go on with those five steps. Yes. The first step is you need to highlight the value of that desired behavior. I'll give you an example that I hear all the time. I want to play more tennis. Now, what does that mean for you? What are the values behind this? What would it mean if you could make that behavior change? So what I want you to do is get pen and paper up because you're going to write this down. And I want you to write down what the negatives are if you were to not change. Meaning you stay right where you are. The example is I want to play more tennis. So what would happen if you didn't play more tennis. The negatives could be, just as examples, I'm not getting into shape, I'll never get better, I'll stay at, let's say, 3-0 or 3-5, I cannot join the teams that I wanna join, uh, maybe I can't spend as much time with my family because now my kid plays tennis and I wanna play more tennis, that would be a great way to spend more time together. So you have to argue for that change. So what are the negatives if you don't make that change? Now flip that coin, what are the positives? If you played more tennis, you would enjoy it more probably because you are improving, you're getting better. You might meet new players, you might meet new hitting partners, you might get asked to get on another team, you might play your way up into a higher team. You might qualify for a higher level and you want to play at a 3-5 level at the state tournament. That would mean that you get to play with your best friend in doubles because you couldn't play before. These are all things that you need to really highlight if you want to make that change stick. So get to it, write down the negatives of not changing and the positives of changing that behavior. Step number two, you've got to gain confidence. So what that means is you have to get your mental resources up for when things get a little rougher, meaning you don't have the energy to get out of bed if you said you were gonna play more tennis or you know, the gym class is early and you don't really wanna get out of bed. So what were the things in your past that you were successful at when you made changes? And make sure that you're not swiping the little things under the rug because they all count. So what are the qualities that you know of yourself, that you know you have, that have helped you in the past to overcome obstacles? That is the first little piece. So again, write that down. I did X, Y, Z to do X, Y, Z because you want it black on white that you have achieved changes before. And again, I'm going back to that example of, I want to play more tennis. I've heard that a gazillion times. And the obstacles in the past for people were, for instance, I don't have enough time. The club's not close enough. I don't have playing partners. What were the obstacles and how can you now work around them? So for instance, it would be, are there public courts maybe closer to your house? Do you have enough financial resources to maybe invest in a ball machine? Can you ask somebody in your neighborhood to play with you? So what do you need to make this successful? Maybe you also want to ask yourself, whose help do you need? Do you need an accountability partner? Can your family or a friend help you with that? Because the more you talk about that, the more you really make plan B's, the better you will be able to navigate obstacles because I guarantee you they will come up. And as we go along, we've done step one and two, you're now seeing 
that there goes a lot more into just playing more tennis. So let's stick with our overall commitment for 2022 that I want to play more tennis. That is very vague. It is not a smart goal. It's not very specific. Yes, it is measurable. Is it achievable? We don't know enough yet. Is it relevant? Relevant to what? Again, we don't have enough information. Is there a timetable? Is there a time period in which I want to achieve it and or start it? Also, no. So we have to rethink those boxes, those check boxes again. So let's go with more specific. Think about how many times you're playing and let's say you add one more time a week. Because if you were to now all of a sudden say like, well, okay, I'm going from one time a week to five times a week, I'll guarantee you that's not gonna work. That change is too radical and too dramatic for most people. So let's start with one more time. So let's say you're playing twice a week already you really love tennis, you have identified what the pros and the cons are for not changing and making the change, let's say you're playing three times. Is that measurable? Yeah, absolutely. Is that achievable? And that is where sometimes people get into trouble. Now, do you have enough time? Does your job allow it? Is your family okay with that? Are the people that you live with okay with that? Because you have obligations. Of course. Are your financial resources okay with that? Adding more court time or maybe a private lesson or a drill to it. Are those things relevant? Absolutely. Adding one more time to it, that makes it more um, relevant to your overall commitment for 2022. Is there a time factor in there yet? No, not yet. So let's say from January 10th on, I will play three times a week and that makes me play more tennis. Now, one key thing is, is it okay for you to say playing tennis means, for instance, using the ball machine or just going to a drill or going out and hitting three buckets of serves or using the ball wall? Because you also have to nail that down. Because if you were to now say in your mind, well, I wanted to play another match and that's really difficult to achieve because of time obligations, whatever else, oops. That is when we really start not hitting all the check boxes. So make sure you really specify that. So by now you're getting the idea why it is so unlikely to change a behavior if I'm just throwing out, oh, I want to play more tennis. We have two more steps ahead of us. And the fourth step is getting ready for action. Now, what that means is simply making sure that I can actually achieve my third time on the tennis court. It could mean reserving the ball machine, finding another hitting partner. Do I have enough time on a third day? Do I have to rearrange my work schedule or my family schedule? What are the things that I actually have to put in place so that I can make this happen? So think through your day that you wanna pick and really think it through from the morning to the afternoon to the night. When will you play tennis? What do you need? Do you need to pack a bagged lunch so that you don't have to stop for lunch somewhere and you can just have a little snack on the way to the tennis court, get your hour of ball machine in and then have your shower stuff, shower at the court so that you can go right back to work. So those are the little things that you really have to pay attention to because they're crucial. Woohoo! Almost there. Last step. Holding yourself accountable and that sometimes is the toughest. You've done all the preliminary work. Now it gets into the nitty gritty. So let's say we're still with our example three times a week. I am playing tennis. You have identified the day that you want to play. You have booked your spot to go to the clinic. You are now ready to go. You have figured out that I have to put my rackets into my car so that I can go straight from work at night and go and hit. Will you still do it? What if you're too tired after a long day of work? What if something else comes up? What do you need to make sure you actually step in on court? Maybe there's a friend in this clinic and you can ask that person to be your accountability partner. Ask that person to send you a text. Hey, get your hiney out and do not leave me stranded by myself in this clinic. 
Do you need to put a reminder into your phone? Because yeah, what, oh, my project in, at work is going so long. It's like, oh, I'll have plenty of time to go to practice. And then it's 10 minutes after the clinic actually started and you're still working and you didn't really schedule that in. What are the things that I need to make this happen? I would suggest put stickers up in your house and move them around every now and then because unless you move them around, they really become part of your furniture and you don't really see those sticky notes anymore. Ask your family or friends to remind you to, yes, nag you to make sure that you have your stuff, that you went to bed, for instance, in time to get up early if your session is early in the morning. Those are the steps that you need. And then when you've gone out and you played the third time, go and celebrate. Because it is far from a given that when we make those commitments that we actually stick with them. So write it down, celebrate it with, I don't know, another glass of mineral water, whatever, and roll around it like a little piglet in mud. That's what we say in German because we assume that little piglets are really happy and proud of themselves when they roll around in mud. So go and celebrate your achievements. And after you've gone through all those five steps, you are now more likely to succeed to make a long lasting behavior change. So go out and do it.